No, save me. Please. Mayu. These were the panicked primal screams of a person's last moments on Earth. It's a sound no one should ever have to hear, much less produce. And once you hear it, it's the kind of thing you'll be hearing again for the rest of your life. Nothing can ever wipe it from your memory. It stays with you. I sat there dumbfounded, so disturbed that I could barely breathe, and watched the slow slither of Nana's body as she disappeared into the unknown. It only took a few seconds for her to vanish into blackness, but those were the longest few seconds of my life. And when she was gone, only a wide swath of blood remained, tracing her path down the hall and across that hellish threshold. N Nana, I have to go save her! Gathering all my courage, I ran at full speed toward the black void, but found no room to enter. Beyond the door was nothing more than a solid wall. What? No! Where is she? Where was she taken? It was just as Shinozaki had said. Right before my eyes, a human being was pulled into a space that simply no longer existed. Pulled out of reality. And yet, I could still hear her. I can't even describe how frightened I was. All I could do was scream and take off running. Away from there. Anywhere else was preferable. <laughs> Why am I going this way? Nana isn't this way. She's behind me. I need to go back. I need to save her. I need to save Nana. But I'm just getting farther and farther away from her. No, I can't. I just can't. It's not possible. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Nana. I couldn't do anything to save you. What do I say to Kishinuma and Shinozaki? We were just talking with her. Now look what's happened. Her legs were torn right off. Right along the lines of those bruises. Wait. The bruises... Nana was sliced up in the exact spots where she had those markings. And I have markings just like that on my stomach. But that doesn't mean anything, right? It's just coincidence. Right? Oh, what is wrong with me? Worrying about myself at a time like this? But I can't help it. I opened my compact mirror and hesitantly brought it down to my abdomen. Lifting my shirt and loosening my skirt a bit to get a better look. Huh. No! I didn't have to look very hard. The color of the bruise on my abdomen had darkened significantly. It was far more pronounced now, practically pulsating in purplish red. It looked more like some kind of demented crest that had surfaced from deep inside my body. No. No! It's darker. More clearly outlined. And it looks bigger now, too. What is this? Why is it here? It's just a bruise, right? I'm sure it'll go away on its own over time if I leave it be. I just kept telling myself that. It would go away on its own. It was nothing. And I was starting to believe it. Feeling somewhat placated, I lifted the mirror up and prepared to shut it and put it away when I caught a quick glimpse of my face. I saw fear, I saw sadness, I saw defeat, but I also saw something else. 
No. At first, I doubted my eyes, but I wasn't seeing things, nor was it a smudge on the mirror. It was another discolored bruise, just like the one on my abdomen. It was nowhere near as dark, but it was definitely there, and given enough time, it would probably get a lot darker. What? Why? When did I get this? Maybe it's just dirty. Maybe I just need to wipe it off. I tried spit shining it away with my finger, but all it did was make it wet. And each time I pressed down on it, the surrounding skin would turn white, creating greater contrast and making it stand out more. It wasn't going away. It wasn't going away! And if it just kept darkening, I might wind up like Nana. No, please! No, no, no! Torn apart at the seams. Suzumoto, what's wrong? I thought I heard you scream. No luck in finding Ogasawara? I don't like that at all. We'll help you search. Suzumoto? No, stay back! I took a step away from them, despite myself. Well, what's going on? Please, just stay back. Nothing's going on, I swear. Did something happen? Did you see something in your compact? It's nothing. I didn't see anything. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I couldn't let them see me like that. I didn't want them to see that hideous bruise. Oi, Suzumoto! What do I do? What do I do? I'm running again, but where? Where am I going? I have to get rid of this. If I don't... If I can't, then... I... I'll wind up like Nana. I have to hurry. I have to find some way of making this go away. I had some concealer in my makeup bag. Maybe I could hide it. There we go. Ha. Huh. Can't see it at all now. All I have to do is get some sleep. When I wake up, that bruise will be long gone. I know it will. Yeah, I was getting all worked up over nothing. It was just a little mark on my face after all. Probably just a result of all the stress I'd been feeling here. Once things calmed down, it would go away for sure. Well, nothing in here. May as well leave. Hmm? I don't remember closing the door. It wouldn't open. And it wasn't like it was locked. Rather, it felt almost if it, as if someone were holding it closed with superhuman strength. Suddenly, I realized why. The door was wrapped multiple times over with thin, black threads. How had I not noticed these a moment ago? What? What the? Is this... human hair? I looked at it a bit more closely and concluded, without question, that's exactly what it was. I felt an unpleasant heat radiating all along my back muscles, across my entire spine. I was being watched. There was some sort of moist, lukewarm presence in the room with me, and slowly but surely, I could sense it moving. Who... who's there? Who's... behind me? I was too scared to turn around. This room... It was a little girl wearing a red dress. Probably a first or second grader. Her skin was as pale as pottery, contrasting with her lacquer-like hair. She looked somehow familiar. 
Ah, this is the girl from the newspaper who survived the murders. Sachiko Shinozaki. But that can't be right. That happened over 30 years ago. This room is so lifeless. I know what it needs. A human autopsy model. I want to dissect a human. What? Have you come to play with us again? No. Please, no. Something was dripping onto the back of my hand. Are these... tears? That's what I thought at first, anyway. If I'd started to cry, I wasn't aware. But considering what I was going through, it wouldn't have been surprising in any way. I wondered just how much I'd cried since getting sealed up in this godforsaken place. Probably more than I'd ever cried before in my entire life. But these weren't tears, were they? Was it blood, then? Did these children do something to me? Sure enough, I reached up and touched my face, and my finger came in contact with something sticky. Something sticky and red. Ah, <gasps> uh, what? Yeah. What did you do to me? <laughs> we didn't do anything. Sachiko's answer was cold and disinterested, and came accompanied with a crooked wry smile. She was just a child, yet one glance from her made every hair on my body stand on end. How about you take a look in the mirror? We'll wait, just for a bit though. Sachiko's face somehow made me feel as if there might be two sides to her. One gentle and one... not. But regardless of which I was dealing with here, I wasn't about to go against her recommendation. I was legitimately curious myself. So I took out my compact, opened it and... Uh, wh why? No. No, please! The bruise I'd concealed with makeup had sprung back to the surface once again, though it could hardly be called a bruise anymore. My skin had literally split open from inside, and blood was beginning to seep out through the pinkish tissue, bead by bead. No. No, this can't be happening! It can't be! No! It's happening. That's all you. If you hadn't fought it, you might have been able to die quickly. But you are going to die. You're going to be torn open along those cracks on your belly. The bruise along my stomach and abdomen had followed suit, splitting open and dripping r dark red blood everywhere. At this point, I'd completely lost any ability to think or reason. I was a goner, and I knew it. What's worse than dying in an instant by getting smashed against a wall? Getting slowly, carefully torn apart, that's what. <laughs> let's play, come on, let's play! Time to begin the autopsy, everyone! No, oh, please, stay away! Stay away! Yeah, I was a goner. I couldn't fight it. Somewhere deep in the pit of my soul, I knew there was no way out. This unimaginably cruel fate was pre predestined. I couldn't escape. Oh, sure, I tried to run. I squirmed and resisted with every last bit of strength I had. But fate had me by the ankle, and I wasn't about to let go. If only I could force myself to lose consciousness. Maybe I could avoid the unbearable agony that I knew was coming. But sadly, I wasn't that strong-willed. I could feel the hands of children all over my body, coming from virtually every direction, and they were really digging. Dying! Save me! 
Sige. Sige ni. Sige. <laughs> your your dear Sige won't be coming to your rescue. No chance. No hope. You're so mean, Sachiko. I was seized with a pain unlike anything I'd ever even imagined possible before. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move, couldn't even think. It felt like my head was going to explode under the pressure of millions of nerves all telling my brain just how much every part of my body hurt. And it didn't stop. Every moment, it grew worse and worse. Then, I began to drift away. What an awful stink! Let's decorate the wall, or maybe the hallway outside, with our new autopsy model. <laughs> the school is getting livelier all the time! <laughs> Sachiko's voice sounded like it was far away in the distance. It was then that I realized, the agony I'd been feeling had changed. It was no longer pain, but chill. It didn't hurt anymore, I was just cold. So cold that I couldn't even feel my body. So cold. So very, very cold. Shige, I can't even move my finger anymore. But even if I'm dead, and even if my body is an unsightly mess, I hope you won't think poorly of me. Because, Shige, I, I, uh... My final wish is that Shige be the one to find my body. As long as it's not too revolting to look at, anyway. I want him to think I'm pretty. I miss him. Shige, bro. <sighs> Sometimes the true ends are more horrible than the bad ends. I'll see you next time.